Let's hear from some people in the audience through discord. You can find our discord at davidpackmancom slash discord. Let's start today with Nevin in Tennessee. Nevin, welcome to the show. What's on your mind today? Uh, hey, David, I just wanted to ask about what your opinion is on the revolutionary left. And a lot of people on the left, revolutionary left, I found, have for some reason support China and Russia and the Ukrainian invasion. So I just want to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, you know, I think one of the things about the revolutionary left is they they claim to be against imperialism and colonialism when it's the United States and do not apply the same standards to other countries. Now, of course, sometimes circumstances are different in other countries than in the United States. If you take a country without a colonial history that's tiny with a small economy or whatever, it would be logical to think about the country differently than the United States. But there are certain principles that to me. Are of paramount importance, I'm against authoritarianism, I'm against um, uh, theocracy. I'm again, you know, all these different things. So when I see authoritarianism in China or in Venezuela or wherever, I'm against that because that's an important principle to me. And I would like to see these so-called revolutionary leftists maybe apply those standards uniformly. OK, thanks for answering my question. Congrats on one point five million subscribers, by the way. Thank you. And we are heading on to two million. That's the new that's the new uh, goal. And I hope that we we get there soon. Yeah, thank you. All right, good. Ne Nevin, not super excited about two million, but that's OK. We're going to we're going to work towards it. It's going to be a great thing. Let's go next to Win from Indiana. Win, welcome to the program. What's on your mind today? Hey, David, how are you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, so uh I have an exam in like three hours in uh, regulatory economics. Mm -hmm. um, so I have a question on monopolies. Okay. So what are your views on like um, not really regulating monopolies? Because what I've learned and like from game theory and such, uh, some monopolies are actually good where it can compete with bigger firms. I I'm, I'm kind of paraphrasing, but I'm not sure how to articulate it well. Well, so here's the thing. The problem with monopoly power is that it be becomes so, so you've got it first. You've got to back up and you have to say, what are our principles here? If you claim to be about allowing markets to direct resources, right? Like if you're a supply supply and demand guy, for lack of a better term, mm. you yeah. have to recognize that a monopoly is getting out of pure supply and demand because the monopoly can get a stranglehold on an industry to the point yep. where normal market forces no longer apply, either because of barriers to entry or the dynamics of market share or for other reasons. So if you claim to care about markets directing resources and supply and demand, then it follows that you have to be against most monopolies. Now, there can be exceptions. There could be areas of society where, for example, I as a social Democrat think that in certain areas we don't want markets to direct resources. So I've talked about health care. I've talked about public education and some others. You might decide that there's certain areas where monopoly power is actually OK or good, either for regulatory reasons or whatever. But the first question is, what is your view on markets directing resources that has to be answered first before you can answer the question about monopoly power? Mm -hmm. so, so what I'm getting at is like social efficiency. So, for example, in the event where there's like, a, let's say Walmart, right, mm -hmm. or whatever, it's, it's like a big, big retail company. And there are like the let's say there's Walmart and there's other three small retail companies. Yep. Um, Walmart is like the dominant, like they have the majority market share. Yes. Is, do you think it's okay if you allow the two smaller industries, I mean, two smaller companies to merge in order to compete with Walmart because, you know, Walmart is dominating the market share. Now, if the government allows the two other companies to compete, to uh, merge, that would be a competitor to Walmart, which reduces Walmart's market share. Therefore, it creates a better competition. If that's, that's Walmart kind of what I'm getting. still has the lion's share 
of the market share, even after the merger of the two smaller players, the monopoly mm. issue really isn't with the merger of the two smaller players. It's with Walmart. And you've still got an oligopoly primarily controlled mm. by one player. So you're absolutely correct. I don't think it actually is a tough one because the merger of the two smaller companies doesn't change the dynamics of Walmart as the monopoly or the near monopoly. Mm -hmm. But it could become a duopoly, right? It, yes, it could. Absolutely. And would you be in favor of that? If because you are you are a social democrat and you believe in markets. Depends on the but industry. If, depends on the specific. You, the, it's such a specific question. You've really got to look at the particulars of the situation. Very hard to answer in the, in the abstract. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So like, yeah, I'm I'm actually like looking into it like according to like looking at the market share and like the math behind it, like the whether if these two companies merge, is it really going to create social efficiency, which means like, is it going to give more options to c consumers? If you know what I'm getting at, because that is a very important money. question to be asking. And also, does it benefit consumers? Many of these telecom mergers, when you ask that question, you say, well, actually, it's not really going to be good for consumers in any way. It'll probably just lead to higher prices and worse customer service. Mm, yeah. yeah. Well, listen, good luck call. on the exam, my friend. Oh, thank you so much. All right. There is Win from Indiana. Very, very important question. Our sponsor, Magic Spoon, is the breakfast cereal that tastes amazing, but without the sugar, carbs, and the crazy ingredients. Magic Spoon has taken your favorite childhood cereals and brilliantly transform them into something you can feel good about eating because each serving has zero grams of sugar under five net carbs and is packed with 13 grams of protein. So it'll work for keto and low carb, but it's really perfect for anyone who wants the occasional sweet, crunchy treat without the sugar. Their portfolio of eight plus unique, delicious flavors allow you to never get bored. My favorite is maple waffle, but they've got the classics like cocoa, fruity, frosted, also cinnamon roll, blueberry muffin. Our entire team has been eating Magic Spoon for years. We love it. But if you don't, they send you all your money back. It's really easy. Magic Spoon has been supporting The David Pakman Show for a long time. They always give my audience $5 off when you go to magicspoon.com slash Pacman and use the code Pacman. The link is down below.